For those that know me, I know that I love my roach fishing. Um, they're a fantastic species, you know, sometimes great, easy to catch if you like, and other times real finicky feeders. Um, you're joining me here at Medlands today. It's a venue that's fantastic for roach fishing. Um, it's late October, the sun's out, and it's a great day for it. Let's go and see what we can catch. Bait selection for today couldn't be much easier really. Um, we've brought some dark fish meal based ground bait, not too much fish meal, it's, it's like a sweet mix. Um, they see it all the time here. Um, it, it's a nice mix that I've mixed up. Um, brought a few maggots for the uck, um, a few dead maggots with some dead pinkies mixed in. That's just for the initial feed really. Handful of worms, again, just for the initial feed, although I will be trying a little piece on the hook as well through the day. Um, and plenty of casters brought three or so pints of casters. Um, it's a bait I really do love to fish. Um, it's a fantastic bait for roach. It usually picks the better, better fish out. It creates a lot of noise when you're feeding them. So these three pints I would expect to use all day today. We're down on peg 30 today on Lambsdown. Um, it, it's the shallow end of the lake. Um, I've decided to fish one line at 13 metres. So if you're looking for, for roach fishing on this lake and a lot of venues really where you've got the opportunity, six to eight, possibly nine foot is, is absolutely ideal for roach fishing. Um, I'm just gonna concentrate on the one line at 13 metres. This means, like I say, I can concentrate on, on working the peg, keeping them fish going in the net, but also it gives me the opportunity to, to work my way through the smaller fish and try and catch the bigger fish later on. If I was to fish, two lines for roach on this sort of aerial lake, especially where it's shallower, closer in. It just splits the fish up a little bit. You know, it's difficult to loose feed two lines properly. It's difficult to fish two lines properly for roach and when you lose feeding casters. So by concentrating everything down one hole in what I think is going to be an ideal depth at 13 metres, we should be able to put plenty of fish in the net. At the start, I'm going to introduce four balls of ground bait. This is going to have a, a good handful of casters, worms, and dead maggots and pinkies in. It's a great venue, like I've said already. Um, it's full of fish, so we can get a volume of bait on the bottom to start with and take it from there. After the initial balls that I'm going to feed, I'll be feeding casters regularly through my catapult, sort of 15 to 30 casters, every single cast or maybe every single bite. You know, if I miss a bite, I'll lay my rig back in and, and feed again. Um, it's really important to get those roach competing and get that bait falling through the water all the time. Um, by, by doing this, not only is it bringing fish into your peg all the time with noise, but the bigger fish get drawn in and start competing more freely for the loose offerings, and in turn you're catching bigger fish and bulking your weight up. Well, I've set three rigs up here today. Um, these are my go-to roach rigs on a, on a venue like this. Um, the first one is a little bulked rig. Um, it's a carp ashore in half a gram. Nice little round body on it. Um, like I said, it's got a little bulk and then three number 10 droppers below that. This will be my starting rig where I try and catch a few quick fish and just put something in the net before I pick up me my favourite rig, if you like, for, for fishing casters. When I say my favourite rig, the new F1 pellet floats. It's got a nice bristle on it as well for, for venues like this where the light's a bit tricky, cause especially with the weather like it is in winter. One minute the sun's out, then it's not. And they've just got a nice one and a half mil bristle on there that you can see all day long. Going down to the bottom end of the rig, um, which is the, the main part, if you like, I've got nines and tens spread like a tapered bulk over the bottom 18 inches to two foot. This is just to mimic the casters falling that little bit slower and fall those slightly better fish that we're aiming to catch. The other rig is identical setup, identical float to the one I've just mentioned, um, just in a 4 x 14 version. This rig will come into play later on in the session if it's not quite going to plan and it's a little bit harder, it's getting a little bit trickier. That rig should pick off those extra few fish needed.
of the nice roach there. Really, I've got them lined up now. They're stuck in a caster like a maggot. Just flicking the rig slightly past where my feed's going, trying to pick off them better fish. That caster's just short of my tip. And there's another one. Really is great fishing. Well, now that we are catching well, just want to talk to you about the position of my roller. Not only has it got to be in the right place for shipping back, i.e. you want to be able to reach it comfortably, you don't want to have to be stretching. Um, if it was too close to me, there'd be too much weight behind and you're just running the risk of breaking a pole section. Again, if it was too far away, you know, you'd have to sort of ship back and almost throw your pole onto your roller. Again, you're asking for a disaster and potentially breaking a pole section. As a general guide, my end of my pole is about three, three and a half metres past where I position my roller for 13 metres. I find this is absolutely perfect. You know, it, I can ship back, drops in my pole sock just nice, don't have any dramas and you're not gonna have any breakages. Another thing as well is the height of my roller. As you've just seen, I've hooked a fish there and because we're fishing shallow, they wanna come straight to the top um, but by having your roller positioned quite high behind me, I can keep my pole tip low, meaning no fish splashing on the top and less hook pulls. On still waters, all through winter really. I don't change diameters of line. I use, I use 08. Um, I find I'm going to catch everything with that. It's, it's light enough to catch your roach and it's also strong enough if you're likely to hook a, a real big fish as well. So um, don't really change too much on still waters regarding diameter of line. Hook sizes, I have a few different ones tied up, but generally for maggots and casters, it's 16s and 18s. Barbless, obviously, a lot of these commercial fisheries are barbless hooks. You just you know, I use um, almost like a round bend up for roach fishing. Um, just find the shape perfect, to be honest. You don't lose many. Critical, really, to find a hook that stop, stays sharp, especially with maggots and casters, because all of a sudden, you know, you, you can't get your hook bait on and in turn, you're going to miss bites by having a blunt hook. So if you do find that all of a sudden your maggot's struggling to go on, just change your hook. It'll just improve everything. Whilst we're catching shallot, um, just want to pick up on a couple of little pointers. Um, to a lot of people, it's something they don't even think about, um, but sometimes these little differences make all the difference to catch up your catch rate and catch slightly better fish as well, which obviously in turn is going to increase your weight at the end, end of the day. The first one is when fishing shallow, you'll notice today as I've been catapulting my bait in, a lot of it's landing a metre or so short. This is because the slightly better fish always tend to seem to hang off so by feeding short of my pole tip I've got the option of fishing in amongst all my bait that's going in you know and where I, I know I will catch some fish and um, smaller fish generally and um, but by occasionally flicking your rig past and keeping a tight line and you will catch some slightly better fish. It just them slightly older, a little bit more wary fish do tend to hang off the feed, especially with the amount of casters we're firing in. Another quick tip is, is how to present your rig, if you like. So the first way, the most common way for um, all types of roach fishing falling through the water is to have your shot strung out like I have, um, ship out, flick your rig over, keep a nice tight line between your pole tip and your float, and just watch your bait fall ever so slowly and nine times out of ten when they're feeding like they are it'll go on the drop. This is fantastic for putting fish in the net um, you know you'll catch all sizes of fish. Um, another method that I found a few years ago by which 
Not sure why, maybe it's because your bait's falling more naturally, but and it's a little bit crude the way, way it works, but if you ship your rig out, just drop it in a heap. It looks horrendous, don't get me wrong. Nine times out of 10, it produces a better fish. Um, it's worked today. We've caught some slightly better roach by doing it. And all those little differences just help by putting fish in your net at the end of the day. Quick point to that. Uh about bait today, hook bait I should say. We've been fishing, feeding a lot of casters, um, and caster has actually been the best bait on the hook. Now sometimes, you know, it, is, it does feel a little bit frustrating because you, you have to change your bait every single chuck. So I have, that's a carp. I have been also trying worm heads. Now, don't, we have been catching some fish on it, but I've been fishing, missing a lot more bites than actually hooking fish which has actually been slower in the end but shows what I know it's a great another eight ounce roach so although sometimes that, that worm head can be a great bait for speed and efficiency. Today, it hasn't been that good really. It's been, if anything, a little bit slower. Just another single caster on there. Shipper. Just flicking the rig past at the moment. Not quite at the end of my pole, but just into that loose feed that's a bit short. Another roach. I'll try a little bit further past the feed this time. That was more in the feed, that one, and caught a slightly smaller fish. The elastics we've used today, um, on the bottom I like to use a, a solid six elastic. It just helps speed things up, but you, you might catch some better fish on the bottom as well, but speed things up by you can ship back without losing, fear of losing them, but you can also lift them three, four ounce fish out comfortably, especially with the depth that it is, it's just over a top three, so you can unship on a four and, and lift them out. The shallow rig, a um, little bit lighter elastic on that one, it's a solid fives. This just means I can ship straight back without fear of losing a fish, and also it won't splash on the top when I do hook the fish. Um, on, still unship on a four, and it just enables you to speed everything up and lift those fish out. Well, at the start of the session, um, we introduced four balls of ground bait full of maggots and casters. And we had a great start fishing the, the positive bulk rig on the bottom, catching all sizes of roach really, predominantly smaller ones, you know, ounce, two, three ounce fish. Onto the strung out rig, pretty much straight away really, probably had five or six just to try it. Wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Thought I'd pick off them better fish like, for the rest of the day. Um, Soon became apparent there was a lot of fish there, so we got up the bank, got that shallow rig out, kept those casters going in, and by fishing this way, it meant I never had to top up with ground bait again, just because I was trying to catch them shallow and the sport was that good, you know, it just kept firing casters in. If, I was, if it wasn't quite as good and I was catching some slightly better fish, I'd be looking to keep them balls of ground bait going in so the fish would be nailed to the bottom, but like I say, there's been that many fish here that's wasn't really going to happen today, so the loose feeding's been the way. We've got all sizes of roach today, really, from an ounce up to, you know, eight, eight, ten ounce fish. It has been really fantastic. As the light started to fade, and the clouds have come over and the sun's gone, it's getting a little bit chilly, but we've caught what's the biggest roach of the day, and it's a fantastic way to end this session. Let's get him out and have a look. Here we go. 
great fish, probably around 10 ounces, and a great way to end this fantastic session. Let's get him back. Mm -hmm.